Melissa, what did you want to say to Hunter? What is your motive? What's your website? Is this money? Um, is it? Um... No, it's uh, just getting that information out to everybody. The most hated man on the internet. It's a title few would be proud to have, but for Hunter Moore, he almost seems proud of being a self-proclaimed professional life ruiner thanks to the controversial website Is Anyone Up? With Netflix releasing, or having released, depending on when you watch this, the most hated man on the internet true crime series, Hunter Moore's name is on the rise. With that, I'm Adam Andrews, and today on Where Are They Now? We're talking about, you guessed it, Hunter Moore. Hunter Moore was born in Sacramento, California on March 9th, 1986, and from a young age, Hunter followed an entrepreneur lifestyle. This started as early as the 8th grade, not too long after being kicked out of his Christian private school, apparently just for fighting. Moore started a t-shirt company. He would go on to start a community online for Diablo 2, a video game. Around the same time, he also started a party promotion business that made him enough money for him to realize that he didn't have much of a knack or need for academics. And instead, he focused his efforts and time on making money and creating business opportunities using the growing and seemingly limitless internet as his tool. Moore lived on the fringes. After he turned 18, he would work as a hairstylist for an adult movie website until he won a six-figure sexual harassment lawsuit and used the money he won to travel, like a blight, through Europe and Japan, presumably partying and living it up, coming to stay in Australia for a year. He came back home to the States after he got scabies. After his life likely soul-searching travels, that was a joke, and his return to the States, he started a company that specialized in sexual parties. He promptly sold this company as this, of all the things he's done, was where he drew the line. Which is interesting given what would come next. Now for the meat and potatoes. In 2010, Hunter Moore started the website known as IsAnyoneUp.com. This website was a social media site where anonymous users could upload compromising photos, usually of their exes, for others to see. But it didn't stop there. The posts would usually not just include the photos, but the name, address, workplace, family information, and sometimes more of the subject of the picture. This obviously not only socially and psychologically damaged many, many victims, most of whom had their photos posted without their consent, but it also meant that any one of the 350,000 separate website viewers could find, message, email, and harass anyone whose photos were posted on this website. But this didn't matter to Moore. He would refuse requests for posts to be taken down. He would claim he was protected by the same laws that protected Facebook, and he responded to cease and desist letters with a simple LOL. This was likely because, on top of the popularity and cult-like following thanks to his non-apologetic attitude and bragging about the website, Hunter would also profit from the website thanks to ad revenue and merchandise pulling in around $8,000 to thirteen to sometimes $30,000 a month. None of that stopped him from getting stabbed with a pen in the shoulder though by one of the victims who made a visit to his home, which kind of made me happy to learn. He also understandably received many, many threats which forced him to move into his grandparents' house, which is kind of hilarious. To add to the controversy, many of the victims of Moore's website claimed that their photos and videos had been hacked and stolen off of their personal computers. In 2012, Moore and a hacker named Charles Evans, or Evans, who went under the alias of Gary Jones, were suspected of hacking related crimes, with Moore paying Evans to break into the email accounts of victims and steal photos to then post. Charlotte Laws, the mother of one of the victims on the site, decided to track Moore down. With the help of a former Marine, James McGibbony, Laws conducted a two year long investigation, compiling evidence from more than 40 victims and gave it to the FBI in an attempt to bring down the horrible site, resulting in an FBI investigation. Moore whined and threatened people over the rumors over the investigation, just like a giant man baby would. But that didn't stop the investigation. And if anything, it likely added fuel to his dumpster fire. A fire that would reach a climax on January 23rd of 2014 when Moore was indicted in a federal court in California following his arrest by the FBI on charges of conspiracy, unauthorized access to a protected computer, and aggravated identity theft. Crimes committed to obtain the revealing photos of unwilling men and women. 
While Moore was released two days later from Sacramento County Jail on a $100,000 bond with no access to the internet and orders to dismantle the Is Anyone Up database under FBI supervision, on February 18th, 2015, Moore pled guilty to the Central District of California U.S. Attorney's Office, admitting to aiding and abetting the unauthorized access of a computer and aggravated identity theft. Thanks to his plea, the professional life ruiner could serve two to seven years in prison with a $500,000 fine. In the end though, Moore was sentenced to two and a half years in a federal prison with three additional years of supervised probation. He was also ordered to pay a $2,000 fine and a $146 restitution and was ordered to delete all the data on the computers that had been seized. His accomplice hacker Charles Evans also pled guilty to the charges of computer hacking and identity theft, saying that he had stolen hundreds of pictures from email accounts and sold them to Hunter Moore. For those crimes, Evans was sentenced to seven years in a federal prison on November 16th, 2015. Which is good and everything, but it makes me question why Hunter was sentenced to only two years when he organized everything. But I digress. So where is he now? Hunter Moore stated in his 2012 Rolling Stone interview that after he sold his website, he felt that there was enough internet mayhem under his name that he can ride that wave of infamous popularity onto greatness. Whatever Whatever the heck that means. But it seems that now that he has faced repercussions for his actions, that won't be the case. Hmm. Personally, I hadn't even heard of him until making this video, and while I'm no insignificant, it just goes to show that a few years of disgustingly earned quote unquote fame doesn't really do much for you, does it? Hmm. Moore was released from prison in May of 2017, and it seems that he now keeps a low profile. According to Netflix, Hunter was initially going to appear and take part in the Most Hated Man on the Internet docuseries, but it seems that he is pulled out of the project for reasons unknown, but hopefully because he is realizing that he is kind of a poo-poo human being. According to Wikipedia, Hunter Moore still remains banned from using Facebook, and let's hope that applies to most social media outlets for the foreseeable future. As for the Is Anyone Up website, well it turns out that on April 19th, 2012, 16 months after the website had gone live, Hunter had sold the website to an anti-bullying website run by James McGibbony, the same former Marine who helped Charlotte Laws in her investigation against Moore. James McGibbony then rerouted isanyoneup.com to go directly to the bullyville.com website. James actually wrote a letter to Moore basically intellectually bullying the life ruiner into giving his website up. And to add insult to injury, a year later on March 8th of 2013, James also won a $250,000 defamation case against Hunter Moore after he called McGibbony some not so nice stuff and threatened his wife. No one ever said this Moore guy was too bright. The previously mentioned Netflix docu-series will premiere on the 27th of this month. July 2022. And the synopsis for the three part series reads, and I quote, featuring poignant exclusive interviews with multiple women and men who fought to have their images taken down, law enforcement agents who worked the case, and the crusaders who fought to take more down. This three part series documents his comeuppance at the hands of the only force more fearsome than an army of internet trolls, a mother protecting her daughter. So there you have it, Hunter Moore, his story and where he is now. Will you be tuning in to watch the three part series when it releases? Let me know in the comments down below. But until next time, I've been your host Adam Andrews. You can find me on Instagram in the description below. And I hope to see you next time on Where Are They Now?